Welcome to another Eternal video. This one's going to be a little bit different. This is the Forge tutorial, beginner's guide, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, I want to bring more people into this game. And with that, there's going to be more beginner players or intermediate players. Um, and just hopefully be able to make a channel that they can discover and help them improve. Because of that, I want to talk about Forge, why you should care, what is it, and how best to play it, and why. So Forge essentially is a solo battle mode, similar to Gauntlet here. So Forge, you build a deck from new cards, and we'll get into all of that, and you'll fight against AI opponents. So all of the solo battles, uh, solo battle modes, just like Gauntlet, are against AI opponents. And the reason that's so good, especially as a newer or intermediate player, you're able to take as long as you want between your decisions. There's no stress about, you know, feeling on the spot or anything. It's just against the computer. So really good opportunities to improve your game in a low stress environment. Now, just like Gauntlet, they're very good value playing and completing your gauntlet and forges. And what I mean by that is if you manage to complete your forge or gauntlet and beat all of the AI opponents, you get a rank up chest. And you see your rank will always be up in the upper left hand corner here. And you see, you start off unranked and then you get if you beat all of your AI opponents, you win the rank up chest, you go to bronze, silver, gold, platinum, masters. So you can get five rank up chests from completing these each chapter of the game. Now, what are these rank up chests? They're the big bucks. So in Forge, for example, your rank up chest will have 1,000 gold and two packs in it. So if you win the forge, you get two gold chests and the rank up chest here. Why this is so amazing is this is one of the highest conversion rates of your gold to amount of packs that you can get in the game. So forge, unlike gauntlet, gauntlet is free to enter, but the rank up chest only has one pack in it, so you only get one pack worth of cards from Gauntlet. But it's free to play, so less entry to barrier, but the ceiling is lower per se. Forge, it costs 2,500 gold to join, but if you complete the Forge, you get four packs, which is 4,000 gold if you were just went into the store and bought packs for gold. 1,000 gold equals one pack. So you get four packs, 1,000 gold from the rank up chest, and about minimum 400 from each of the gold. So you end up getting 2,800 gold, which there's your entry fee there, and four packs. So all that combines to make Forge one of the best ways to grow your collection. Now, one thing to keep in note, I mentioned your, you can rank up to masters between chapters. Now, essentially, your rank resets with each new major set release. So you get about three to four months between each set that you're able to rank up all the way to masters. And then it resets back down to unranked, and then you get to stack up all of the rank up chests for another round. And you just keep this going. So obviously over the course of five rank up chests, just from Forge, that becomes four times 20 packs. So super good deal. Things to know, after you rank up to Masters, Forge then stops being as good of a way to spend your gold. There's different ways you can spend your gold to get more packs than you would normally be able to get if you just spent a thousand gold per pack. But we'll leave that for another video. Getting into how Forge works here. So we're gonna join. Unlike Gauntlet, where you bring your own pre-constructed deck to face the AI battles, you will make your deck from a selection 
of three cards. You pick one card, pick one of 25, and then another set of three cards will show up. You pick one of those, another set of three, pick one of those, etc. until you have 25 cards. It adds the sigils, and then you go straight into your games. So very simple, not as complicated. You know, you won't have a million choices. It's just whatever you pick, right? <laughs> the other sweet thing, in addition to all the reward chests you get, including that sweet, sweet rank up chest that we're aiming for, you get to keep all of the cards that you pick from this forge run. And minimum, you get one rare out of these 25 cards and it can be two rares it can be a rare and a legendary even so it all depends and right there right one rare per pack one rare kind of equals 1000 gold you're already kind of getting a thousand gold back just from this and none of your rewards so super sweet so let's talk strategy right we're trying to pick strong units and removal that kills stuns makes their power zero just gets rid of our opponent's unit so we're looking for removal and strong units here second note or maybe third or fourth you can only be two factions in forge so once you select a faction that you haven't had before that locks in as one of your factions and then it'll only show you the two factions you've selected once you've picked your two factions getting straight into it when you play a hero draw a card so these are all fine uncommons i'm gonna take the outland sniper though right it's a mediocre sized creature it's just a 2-2 but summon deal two damage to a unit it's kind of like removal on a mediocre creature this card could also be really good, but there's no chance or there's no guarantee we find a lot of heroes to actually make its effect good. So we'll take Outland Sniper. That locks us in a red here, so it's always going to show us a fire card. And now we have two different selections for our second faction. Eavesdrop is a super strong common. Enemy player discards two cards, or it has inscribed, which means you can use it as a sigil. Super powerful. That way you have those games where you draw too many sigils, where well, at least one of them is a spell. And if you don't draw enough sigils, some of your normal spells are sigils. So really gets you out of those binds. Now, advanced tip here. Let's say these two cards were garbage or you weren't really wanting to play that faction. If I select Hellfire Rifle, the next three cards in the pack will have a fire card and two other factions of cards. So you can kind of delay your decision for your second faction a little bit longer. I think like pick four, it finally shows you three cards, none of which are fire, and then you're forced to choose. But Eavesdrop's amazing. We're slamming that. Um, I don't like 1-1s. One they aren't an impactful enough unit unless they have some really good synergy in your deck or some other effect. This fast spell's not great, right? Sure, it can make your unit strong enough to kill theirs, but there's no health buff, so you just end up losing this card and your unit to kill theirs. You don't want to do that. So we'll take Spear Frenzy Warrior. That is a terrifying and sick premium artwork. Oh my god. Affliction, kind of removal. It can take out small things or at least weaken something enough where you don't care about it. But Calderon Captain buffs your other creatures. It has revenge, so even if you trade it off with your opponent's unit, it comes back. So slamming that super good card. Um, mediocre relics, you don't want a lot of cards that just dirtle around and don't actively add to your board or hurt your opponent's board. Um, so I think we'll take the, the unit here. One damage, this could be amazing if they have two one health things, but we'll, we'll take the unit here. Okay, strangers are deadly, eh, beacon of war could be good but uh cabal the house cat making our opponent discard very powerful effect warning shot really good but one one deadly unit just great blocker 
Rampage, a really good fast spell. A call the hit here is decent removal as well. Also do have this unit, but I think we can do better than that. We'll take the fast spell here. So four costs three, three. So right as we're picking cards, we want to keep in mind our mana curve, meaning we want to form a nice bell curve of costs of spells and units in our deck. So not very, like no zeros, maybe one or two ones, a lot more twos, a lot more threes, and then start decreasing fours, five, six, seven going down. So you wanna, it's called building a curve. Because of that, we'll take the Ruin Binder. It's a three cost, we already have a couple fours. Oh wow, Embezzler here, super good unit. Give something unblockable and a buff, and it itself has unblockable. Just can finish a game really well. This card just doesn't really do enough for us to want. You guys know one power, one ones just aren't that great, so just ignore those. So we'll take the mediocre unit there. Okay, wrong turn. Not the best thing, but it sacrifices a, one of their units and you invoke, so the card just replaces itself with a selection of three cards. Choose between a random spell unit or attachment. So, super good. You take out one of their units and then get to choose a new card to replace this. Gun down. Five damage to kill a unit. Yeah, that, that is removal. Pay for twist. Otherwise, it's just a three cost. I kind of like just taking something to fix our influence here. And it's a two drop, which we're in need of. Another ease drop? I don't mind another ease drop. Why are we getting so many four drops here? Um, I don't like this. It is removal, but it likely won't last very long. And one cost fast spell speed to deal two. I kind of just like having that, especially we already have pretty lopsided curve here. Okay, Calderon Captain, I would rather have a unit that can come back after it dies. It's just so powerful. You end up winning games against your opponents who end up running out of steam. Okay, we'll take another four drop. Once again, we don't want these weak one cost units in our deck. Um, we'll take the three drop for the same curve considerations here. Kill an exhausted unit, then draw a unit from your void with higher cost. That's pretty sick, but Arachnoid Terra also just has that effect of killing an exhausted unit, and it's a creature, or, or a unit. Okay, Embezzler is a better six drop than just this five five. Just it, it lets you win games on a very clogged board when your opponent has a million units and you have a million units. Um, I'm fine with the Beseech the Throne. Draw a card, then plunder. Make sure we can get to these higher cost spells. Sack a unit to plunder. I don't think I have confidence we'll be able to use that relic weapon enough. So we'll just take the Thunder Wing here. Okay, and a call to hit. So another kind of narrow, but really good removal spell with Inscribe. And then, do we get a legendary? Okay, no legendaries. Um, but we get some solid rares to choose from. So this lets us sack units and uh, kind of whittle down our opponent's board, and this is just an aggressive unit here. I like the Oni Insider. Drawing a War Helm seems pretty powerful. The Rat King also really good, but um, I want that rare. You can also just choose a card because you want it. Essentially your Forge Run, and this is the same in Gauntlet, they last until you beat all of your AI opponents. So the seven wins, or you get two losses, whichever comes first. 
So there is a chance he could get kicked out. You only get the rank up chest if you get to the seventh boss and beat him. So there's a chance he could get kicked out, but especially the early ranks, you'll do just fine, especially if you take these tips from this video and use it to build a really sweet forge deck with no one cost units that don't do anything or relics that don't affect the board. You want strong units, a nice curve, good removal, and you'll be well on your way to racking up some rank up chests. So let's play a game or two, give you guys an example of how the games look and play out. Students of Huru. Okay, what do we got here? This, this is great. We got removal, a two drop, and then a, a later unit. We have all of our influence. Once again, this is why you don't play this, like, we don't care about that card at all. We might as well just totally ignore it, right? You just want, you just want your cards to do something in your deck. I know it sounds stupid, but... Um, we'll do two damage to kill his 2-2 uh, there. Make sure we keep his board clear. Okay, we'll draw a War Helm here. Almost there. We don't care about that. So what we're going to do here is we'll probably wait to equip the War Helm. Obviously, we can attack with a 3-1 now, but any unit he plays, and then we're just a 4-1, we aren't really going to be able to do anything with. So we'll just attack, he'll block, and then we lost our unit and this card. So that's just no good. Okay. Damn. Oh, there's his uh, blocker for our guy. But we'll play our 2-2 here that we can start attacking in. We don't care if he blocks. This dies in a 2-1-1. So we'll go ahead attack. Hopefully he blocks here. Nope. Okay, we'll play that. Do we save this for a contract? Yeah. Let me just play the captain here. Yeah, this this game's gonna be over fairly quickly here. So we'll give him the contract. You know, we're just gonna attack with everything here. Oh! Okay. That was really good for our opponent. Not expecting that. But... We're going to win this game in short order here. Imagine if this was just even just a two cost 2-2 two -two at this point. Um, he has no good blocks, so what we can do actually is give our unblockable guy Warcry. <laughs> Pass a turn. game play that kill him attack with everything Not much to say there, right? Pretty pretty easy games. Um, it was a first opponent. They tend to get stronger as it goes on, but that also that also has been not true a lot as well. Randomly, one deck can just you know be be pretty good. But okay, best serve cold. So this is the revenge deck. So we're gonna be pretty scared about this one. Um, we'll keep this hand pretty decent now this is gonna seem weird I'm probably gonna inscribe call the hit just because it's not good to one for one removal something with revenge because it's just gonna come back oh wow this can't even kill that okay we have nothing that costs two so yep we'll inscribe that and pass 
small incision. <laughs> of course, now he plays something that's too. Okay, we'll play Welcome Ruin Binder. Do we contract to gain the two? I don't think so. We need to keep on playing units and defending against his rather than taking two debt out of our next turn's power. Wow, is that permanent? Uh, it, really, it is. Okay, so we'll just soak up the three damage here. Brutal. Okay. We'll play this guy, and we'll kill the 3-2. Kind of crappy, it's going to take up all of our next turn, but it does kill his unit, and this thing can block since it has the most power. Yeah, okay, nice. So our opponent didn't follow up with any big unit or scary flyer. Um, We won't... Attack, we'll leave him back so he can defend against the 2-1 here. You want to wait, stabilize the board, and then start turning the tables. Okay, so now we'll attack. Probably take it, yeah. And then I think we will just... Uh, we'll play. We'll play both. And we'll take the debt now, gain the two life. That'll be pretty important for us to stay alive long enough to turn this game around. Peace is its own okay, one one. Remember, we don't care about those. Okay, we'll attack here like this. Okay, I was hoping he would trade away his 1-1, one, one, since this will hopefully he'll have to sacrifice a more meaningful creature. Uh, so, this is the invoke effect, by the way. You choose from a spell, a unit, or a relic weapon. Two rares and a legendary. This doesn't do much for us since we can't get any units back from our void, so we'll just take the strong unit here. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. We'll block here, save us the life. And now I'm feeling really good. In fact, we'll eavesdrop to make him discard two. Okay, they're just two sigils. Attack for four. Here is what was. And play a 3-5 with Dudley. <laughs> it's a good one. Well, we can't not do anything here, so... And then we'll deal the two damage to his flyer that's growing all of his units now. Yeah. Nice. I guess I should... Oh, that, that was bad. Very close to being game, though. Yeah, I should have killed that first. That way it would just shrink one of my units. It still would have been alive, though. Right on. Yeah, GG, GG. Yes. Whew. Um, seems fine to me. Obviously, not very defensive, so if our opponent gets off to a quick start, we could be in trouble. Draw a card, then plunder, sure. Um, I guess we could just make the interloper into a sigil, right? A 1-1's one not going to do anything defensively. We have all the influence we want. We just want to get to our more expensive stuff. Now we can play him. We'll contract just because we aren't under any pressure. 
so we don't need to play a four drop next turn. It wouldn't have even been able to kill this thing. We do, however, get to make our opponent discard a card. They just lose a sigil. Today is a good day to die. So we'll attack for one. Interesting. Um, we'll deal it to the life steal guy. I'd rather kill that first. Now that guy comes back with a revenge. Two damage kills the rest of that unit. That was a really good turn for us. And that was good for our opponent. Okay, we aren't going to be able to block this. Um, so we'll have a block on that, so we'll just play Cabal and Bezler. Attack for five. Block it immediately. 5-3 is pretty good. Um, well, we'll attack with a 3-4 and probably just kill the 2-2 two -two while we have a chance before they play a dragon and it grows. The age of man is over. Okay, I'll take that, unfortunately. We'll use our deck to kill it. Nice, we're in a good spot right now. Play everything we can. Oh, hello, what? Okay, I, if I realized, if I read this card, I thought it just made treasures or something. Okay, okay. We're gonna need to outpace plus five health every turn. We need a good draw here. Okay, so we tack with him, we leave him to block. Attack like this. Actually, so we'll play this, make the war helm. Then we'll put it on him. And now we gotta press the gotta press the damage race here. So we attack like this, this forces a lot of blocks from our opponent. Trades, trades. Oh man, yeah, this isn't great. Let's see what you got, opponent. Okay, we'll take three here. Oh no! What? What? Okay. So we need to attack for four. Oh man, he gains more than we're dealing.
Okay, we kill that. We attack with just this. We are so close. Okay, that's fine. He attacks with both, we have blocks for everything. Let's go! Oh my god. The call, the hit to kill the thing, giving it life steal. Wow. And there you have it. That is Forge, and that's all the reasons you should make sure you maximize your rank up chess wins. Make sure you grind up to masters between each chapter. And if you do that with Gauntlet and Forge, you'll be earning a ton of extra packs to grow your collection way quicker than if you were just ignoring Forge and Gauntlet altogether. And just keep in mind, Gauntlet, sure, it's free. You just bring a deck, it might seem easier. You don't have to worry about not making it and losing your gold. Just remember, when you get that rank up chest from Forge, you plus so hard on your investment of the 2,500 gold that it easily makes up for it. So hop in there, get battling, and get winning those rank up chests. I hope this video is helpful. If I breeze through anything or something didn't make sense, please leave a comment down below. I will make sure I answer it, help you out, and maybe I could do another video like this going through it again if you guys would find that helpful. So let me know what you guys think, and I hope I catch you on the channel for more Eternal content. Peace!